I I am so much better today than yesterday. I was totally exhausted. All right, so let's uh, get this party going. So this is gonna be part two of the upper chakras. Um, and we're gonna do the crown and everything about the crown. And then I'm gonna tell you how I open my third eye and how I keep it open, okay? All right, crown chakra. Uh, the crown chakra is located in the pituitary gland. I know how to say this. Um, area the the is part of the cerebral cortex and the cerebral and the central nervous system okay and remember that um all your intuition comes in your central nervous system okay all your uh you know your five senses uh which all together makes your sixth sense anyhow so if you take your two fingers and put them in your hairline like this and you start sliding back there's a little, like mine is really close to the front. Some people are more to the center. Some people are more to the back. Uh, but you can feel it. There's going to be like a little dip, okay? Like a little dip. That's where your crown chakra is, all right? Exactly there. Um, <clears throat> so to, to start uh, activating it, to open it up, to, you know, to start activating it, you can massage that area or you can tap it. You can tap that area. Okay. Um, so there's something really important is this word of advice. Um, children are born with that part energetically open and physically open you know that is what is called the soft spot of a baby of a newborn baby so the skull which is the bone in your head uh the skull is not completely fused you know the skull comes in like four different parts it's like a puzzle four different parts that they come together and they come together you know the the two in the front the two in the back the the two in the front and the two in the back. They come together and then at the last, they fuse together at the very top, right? So children, when they're born, they're completely open to spirit. So there's no need, there's no need at all to try to open their chakras because the chakras are open, okay? The chakras are open. That's why you can see babies looking out like they're interacting with somebody they are. They're interacting with uh, with, with spirits, with um, uh, probably, um, you know, your ancestors, people before your grandparents, great grandparents, whatever that have passed, that have crossed over and they're coming to see the baby uh, and babies can see them. There's, and they don't question that, you know, the person is there, they're playing with them. So, you know, they're smile and they, you know, and make noises and stuff. Imaginary friends are spirits. Um, there's a cute story. Uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, who is almost 15 now, when she was two and a half, three years old, she started singing a song. And I was like, who show you that? Because it's a song that I've never sang. I know this because I don't really know this song, but when I hear it, I can recognize it. And it was a song that my grandmother used to sing to me. And my grandmother passed away years before she was born. Uh, so she died like, like a month before her brother was born. And her brother is five and a half years older than her. So way before she was born. And she started singing this song. And I said, who taught you that song? And she told me the woman in yellow. And she pointed her picture uh, and and I, you know, I, I went to the picture and my grandmother has a, has a yellow dress. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I know nobody could have taught her this song because my mother doesn't sing that song. My husband's side of the family has never heard of that song. So there's no way she, anybody else could have taught her that song. So anyhow, so when, when, when you hear that children have uh, imaginary friends, they're spirits, um, 
that come and talk to them, protect them, play with them. Uh, but then we as parents tell them, oh, no, that's just your imagination. They're imaginary friends. They're not real. Uh, don't say that in front of people. They're going to think that you're crazy or what have you. Right. So they shut that down. Uh, but so babies have their crown chakra completely open when they're born. But it's very important not to touch that part because the, the brain is exposed. There's just a little bit of skin there, uh, the scalp that's covering up because the, the skull is not fused. It's not completely covering it. So please do not tap, do not touch. There's no need for that and it's dangerous, okay? So that's it. Um, and it closes about a year, year and a half uh, so, you know, if, if you, if you want, I, I always advise parents to expose your children to this information, uh, allow them, encourage them to speak to spirit. If, if you see that they have skills, just encourage that support that, because that's going to be so beneficial for them, but there's no need, uh, for, for us to try to open little kids chakras there. They are open. They start closing and getting messed up as we grow older. And of course, if there is some kind of trauma in childhood, yes. But, um, if, if not, please don't touch a baby's crown chakra. Okay. Um, so when the crown chakra is perfectly balanced, it governs oneness and consciousness, right? It's when you understand you're connected to everyone and everything. And when I say everyone and everything, I mean it. It's that, I mean that Karen, Karen, Karen that you despise, that politician that you rather see disappear, the trees, the birds, the rocks, the chair that you're sitting on, everything, everything. We are part of everything. We are a system. Our body is a system, right? Uh, we have circulatory system and we have a breathing system and we have a bone system and we have all kinds of system. We have a nervous system. We, we are a system within a system. We are in the solar system. We're in the planetary system. We, we, we are a system within a system within a system within a system, right? So we are part of everything. We are one with the universe. We are one with God. We are one with consciousness. We are a little part of it, of all of it. And that's, uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of the reasons why I became a vegetarian, I'm vegetarian, been for like 10 years, um, because of the awareness of the suffering uh, of the animal that I was consuming, that I was eating. I also believe that humans were not made to eat meat, just looking at the length of your of our uh, digestive system and the shape of our teeth, but that's a completely different story and it's not not important for this okay that's my my personal opinion um and it 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 doesn't matter here but if you choose to eat meat which is absolutely perfectly fine um because it's a personal choice like like so many others um do it with awareness we want to do everything with awareness you know breathing and speaking and thinking and and moving and and definitely eating with awareness um so and and gratitude so thank that animal for giving you the nutrients that your body needs to thrive um and and be thankful for the for the plants for the fruits and the vegetables that you're consuming because they are alive too um th that's also why it's so important to to eat the food the least processed because you know when you eat a, a fruit it's still alive and you're consuming that live energy that, that life force instead of something out of a can or out of the freezer or out of a package that is completely dead and full of chemicals right 
And there's a place for that. You know, you, you'll find packages in my pantry too. Uh, but we try to limit those for like absolute necessity, you know, when we have hurricanes and stuff like that. And the kids sometimes grab something to take on the go, but we limit those as much as possible. Um, so always bless, charge your food and your water. Always, always, always. It It's going to make a big difference um, because you're infusing it with even your energy. So you're consuming it with even more energy. And if you bring in the energy from the universe, it's even better. So going back to the crown, um, it's that oneness. Uh, and so I'm able to look at, I don't know, a bee, a butterfly, whatever, and and I and 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 I can understand the connected that I am connected to that bee to that butterfly. I'm able to look at someone across the world and understand that we are connected. We are connected. We are living in a world of separation. So anything or anyone that uses that kind of language of of us being different of. And not so much being different, but need, needing to be to be separated because we're different, we need to detach from. Because we are one. We are one with the world. And don't get me wrong, we're here to have a, a, a human experience. And um, we are here to, 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 to do the three D things. We, we, we can't, um, you know, live out of meditation and breath work. That's not going to pay the rent or groceries, right? We must do the three D things, uh, go to work and pay our bills and all the things, but we can do it with kindness and with that oneness awareness. Um, so taking ourselves out of the material world and being able to see the bigger picture uh, outside of the material world. And there's nothing wrong with nice things. I like nice things. I have nice things. Not only that, we deserve nice things. Being attached to those things is the problem. Uh, but in a way that is toxic to us. For example, my daughter, the one that was singing the little song, um, says that I'm in love with my car and she may have a point <laughs> um, but it's in a positive way because my car doesn't define me right I don't stop being who I am for the kind of car that I drive uh, if one day I don't have that car and that will that day will come he will not stop me being who I am uh, and because I don't mind driving any other car or riding any other car, you know? Uh, so loving my car is not an issue because I don't allow the car to define who I am. This oneness also involves the ego. Now, ego has gotten a bad rap. It's actually good. The ego was created, was created to keep us safe. Ego tells us to do this or that so we stay safe, right? Uh, so that's why sometimes we have that little voice in our head that said, do you really want to do that? That's our ego because it's trying to keep us safe. The problem with that is um, sometimes the ego tells us to stay in a situation that is familiar, even though it could be toxic, but we know it is familiar, so it's safer because we know what to expect, okay? Like staying at a job that we don't like anymore because it's, it pays good or because it keeps us afloat. So we know that. At least we have that. But we want to grow. But ego says, no, but, but, but stay because at least you know what you're getting, right? Or staying in a, in a relationship that is loveless and maybe we're being abused but what if the next person is worse that's the ego and that's the part of the ego that doesn't serve us 
So ego look for similarities and tells us to stay away from, for example, people that seem different than us, right? Because they are unknown. So they could be dangerous. Okay. So it's not that there's certain group of people that are dangerous is that they're different but that's okay that's okay if we are really good at something for example our ego may tell us that we're better to keep us safe those are the the parts of the ego that we need to be aware of so driving a nice car or having a master's degree does not doesn't make me a better person it makes me maybe better educated, um, maybe have more resources or maybe more debt, but it doesn't make me a better person, not at all. So a lot of people uh, that, that are having headaches or issues with your nervous system, um, having problems sleeping, feeling tired, even though you're sleeping a good amount of time, and that's another side note. If, if you're having those symptoms that you're sleeping a good amount of time, but you're always exhausted, uh, there may be a deficient of vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D is a vitamin that we get from the sun. And most of us, the very majority of us do not get enough sun exposure. So we need to supplement vitamin D, vitamin D3 is what's important, okay? Side note. Uh, also feeling depressed, lack of joy in life, weakened immune system, um, all those things are a sign of, um, of a depressed or closed uh, crown chakra. I have a fun fact for you. If you massage your big toe, you help your crown chakra. How about that? If you massage your little toe, you help your third eye. What? I know, crazy. <laughs> so how to heal and activate your crown? Well, we already said to massage it, to tap it, or work on your big toe. When your crown chakra is about inspiration, are you feeling inspired? Are you inspired in your life? Um, so it's important. It's important if, if you feel yourself in a rut, if you feel that one day is just the same as the next and the next and the next. Um, and we all feel like that in a, a, up to a certain point. Uh, that's why it's important to be in a good relationship. That's why it's important to take care of ourselves. That's why it's important to be in a job that you love to do so we can feel inspired, even though most days look about the same, okay? But there has to be a challenge somewhere. Um, that's why I also... Uh, try to, you know, have something. I, I had a corporate job that I left because I wanted to do this full time because this inspired me. D talking and doing things uh, of spiritual nature light me up, just light me up. I can talk about this all day long. And I work really hard. I work long hours, but it, in, it's inspiring to me, okay? So find a little hobby, read a good book, you know, have fa fabulous conversation with somebody. Those are the things that break the monotony, the monotony of um, the everyday life, okay? Uh, we can also eat purple things for the crown because um the crown you know is you know it, it shows us as purple uh we also can eat things that look like brains like cauliflower uh, or walnuts okay things like that 
As far as, far as physical practices, uh, of course, meditation, breath work, um, using that as a way to quiet your mind and to connect to spirit. Listen, having a daily practice is important. People tell me all the time that they're having all kinds of issues with their spirituality. Uh, I can't connect. I used to be able to connect this, that, and the other. And one of my first questions is, what is your daily practice? And the response more often than not is, I don't have time for that. Well, then this is, is a matter of priority. You say your spiritual path is important, then you must have a daily practice. That's it. There's no way around that. If you want to talk to spirit, you have to have a time to talk to spirit. End of story. And if you don't learn to quiet your mind, you're not going to hear spirit because spirit is very subtle. I have an incredible, incredible um, relationship with Archangel Michael. He literally grabbed my hand and, and took me down my spiritual path when I first started. So I wish Archangel Michael would say, hey, Yari, uh, you need to do this and this and this and that. Wouldn't that be nice? But it don't work like that. Spirit speaks in subtle hints. So if you have all kinds of noise in your head, you're not going to hear it because it's not going to be a scream. It's going to be a talk or maybe just a quiet little gentle conversation or a whisper. So you need to quiet your mind so you can get it, so you can hear it when it comes. Listen, ask your favorite basketball player, what do they do every day? What do you do every day? They practice basketball. They will never say, I ain't got time for that. What? So is it important for you or is it not important for you? You need to choose. You know, all of this, I know, you know, when we see on television and movies, whatever, you even, you know, I see people, I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, I can do that, but I didn't get that. Boom, like, like a miracle. I guess there's some people like that, but most of us, this is hard work. We have to do daily practices. We need to do our shadow work. And actually, those people on that you watch on TV, they do that too. They just don't tell you about it, but they do. They do. They totally do. Daily practice, shadow work. Uh, we need to work on our mindset uh, about being positive, posit as positive as possible. Of course, honoring and respecting all your feelings. We need to continue learning continue learning uh i've been doing this for years for a long time <laughs> and i learn things every day every single day but i allow time for learning i'm always taking classes i'm listening to podcasts i'm listening to youtube videos i'm reading and you know what i also do i listen to you I listen to you because it doesn't matter how much I know. There's always something to learn. And you teach me all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the other thing that you need to do is take care of yourself. You need to take care of your avatar. Treat it well. Your spirit, before you were born, chose to take you on this 100 year adventure you want your avatar to last as long as you possibly can you just do take care of yourself all right third eye activation this is what i do okay um what i do and a lot of people 
get instant results. Um, but I still tell people to, to do this as part of your practice, okay? Um, it's being able to put all your, atten all your attention on connecting to your heart. Now, remember when we were doing the heart activation, we started in the up here, right? <laughs> so to, to activate the third eye, we're going to start down here, which is the portal of intuition, right? We learned that. Um, so we're going to put all the attention on the heart and go to the head, okay? Now, the reason for this uh, is because they have shown that electromagnetic uh, energy of the heart is thousands of times more powerful than your head. So, and do you know that you have neurons in your heart? You do. You know, I thought, I remember in, I don't know, high school, 10th grade or something like that, chemistry, that they told me, or biology, 11th grade biology. Now they told me that neurons were brain cells. You got neurons in your heart, like 40,000 of them. Yeah, I know. So uh, many when, when many people are going through this process, they're only using it like on the mental side. But you, if you were to apply the connection from the heart, it makes it so much more powerful, okay? So now in order to do this, you can do this, you can simply just sit down and be comfortable and put the awareness on feeding inside of your heart, right? Uh, and what you want to do is to magnify the feeling, okay? Um, whatever feeling that you're feeling at that moment, um, positive feeling, you know, you want to be grateful. You want to be happy that you have this opportunity to open your third eye and how wonderful it's going to be. So, so feel that if you need to, to put your hands over your heart, you can do that, but you want to feel it in the, in the set of your, in your heart center. Now, the next step is being able to imagine using visualization and, and, and feeling it, imagine it, connecting to it, going up your neck. So we're going to go backwards, go up your neck, going through the back of your head and going all, all the way to your third eye, which is, you know, right between, I told you where it is, right? Right in the center of your brain. Uh, what you want to do is then focus on feeling and connecting uh, that through visualization and also having the intention of connecting that, okay? As you begin to breathe into it, and then you close your eyes and you, with your eyes closed, you look up, okay? And this is not very comfortable, not very comfortable. So you're going to close your eyes and you're going to look up and in the center, like if you were looking at your third eye, but with your eyes closed. And you want to do that with a little bit of strength, with a little bit of fourth. Okay. Uh, this technique has been around for thousands of years. The monks uh, do this. Um, so this, this, this technique is, is nothing new. Okay. So close your eyes and bring your up, eyes up almost as you're looking at the, your third eye area. And as you do that, you put attention there and you start to find that the thinking goes away. That monkey mind, that chatter, blah, 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 is going to kind of quiet down because it takes effort to do that with your eyes. So the mind is going to kind of quiet down, okay? This is going to allow you to be more present, which is very important. Now, the key to this is that as you begin doing it, you are moving the feeling and that electromagnetic 
energy off the heart and you're combining it then becomes so much more powerful and then it moves up and connected to your third eye is when you start getting results, okay? Some people may see results immediately. Most of us will take some time, so just practice. You want to do that for a few minutes. Uh, what I like to do is I like to make this as part of my meditation, not guided meditation, okay? Guided meditation is fine. I do guided meditation. But guided meditation is not going to allow you to speak to spirit, okay? You need to quiet a quiet space. And I use binaural beats or white noise. Uh, sometimes just silence. Sometimes just silence. And your meditation should always start with breathing, you know, focusing on the breathing, which is what's going to like calm down the mind. Of course, I've been doing this for so long that, you know, as soon as I do meditation, my mind goes like, Boop. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it wasn't like that. It took me some time. Uh, so after you kind of settle into your meditation, then you do, you know, you, you, you put your intention and your feeling in your heart and you go up and then you do, you do the I thing and you hold that for two or three minutes. You're not going to be able to do more. It's, it's going to hurt that, you know, it takes some strength to do that. It's going to hurt. And then you relax your eyes and you continue your meditation for another, I don't know, five minutes. Just give your eyes a rest. And then you do it again. And then you can do cycles like that. Uh, you can have a timer on your phone that just gives you like a little beep or something. So it doesn't take you completely out of your meditation. So you know it's time to do the eye thing. And it's time time to do the relax your eyes thing. Um, and, and you do it over and over. And... When I first started doing that, I immediately felt pressure right here. Like somebody was pressing like a quarter, like a coin, a quarter uh, right here and pressure. And I was like, "Woo, this is working. But really after doing it daily, I want to say a week, a week and a half, whoa he was like great my third eye so now i do this like a like maintenance okay i do it like maintenance i try to do it at least once a week i just like doing it um but yeah so after you open your third eye and you have the results that you like, just don't forget about it. Just do it maybe once a week, maybe twice a month. I don't know. You have, you're going to have to find whatever works, um, whatever works for you. So, um, well, this is it for, for the upper chakras. Uh, please uh, let me know if you have questions, if there's anything that you want to learn more about. I'll be happy to do a live, to do a video, to do a post, whatever uh, is necessary. Try to put your questions in the chat so other people can benefit from my answers. Okay. And I'll see you in the group. Bye.